Welcome back to another video. I'm Colin Stucker, the Wild CEO. I'm gonna read for you 50 real food tips from my new book, which you can find on Amazon. Kindle version is only $2.99 right now, and physical copy makes a great gift, $10. This is gonna help you get in the kitchen, spend more time getting back to the proper natural human diet, which is real food. Don't let any of the diet dogma out there convince you that there isn't a natural human diet. And don't let people tell you that everyone's different and this and that. No, okay? We are 99.99 whatever percent more the same than we are different, which means there is a proper human diet at the baseline based on what we know for sure about human biology and history, which is based on real food. When humans thrived in the wild, we didn't have fake processed food. The natural human diet, the proper human diet, is based on real food. And that's why I'm on a mission to help more people get in the kitchen and cook more real food. All right, so let's get into it. Let's take three randomly selected tips from the book. And we have two right here. I'll probably just read one of these. So the first one is tip number 21, the jar of pickled onions in, in the fridge. Play to each element's strengths. Use salt to enhance, fat to carry, and acid to balance flavor. Salmon Nazaret from Salt, Fat, Acid, and Heat. Great book I recommend. Keep a jar of pickled onions in your fridge. Acid is the least considered seasoning agent for the home cook. A dash of acid is often the missing ingredient in a dish that's not fully there. This is actually something that I started doing it more. So a squeeze of lemon or lime, almost always, or a dash of vinegar on the top of, I mean, any dish, anything that you are about to eat, add some acid to it, and it's gonna make it better. And what's great about pickled onions is you can put them on anything. You can put them on sandwiches. You can put them on top of a chili. You can put, I mean, there's even desserts made with them. It's incredible. So pickled onions are great on everything and they are stupid simple to make. This is the basic recipe. One onion, one cup of water, one cup of white vinegar, one teaspoon of salt, and then a dash of sugar. That's optional if you want. What you're gonna do is you're going to heat the water and vinegar in a pot until it gets to a boil. And then you're gonna immediately pour over the sliced onions inside of a jar with the water and vinegar heated mixture. And then you're basically gonna leave it on the counter until it cools. And then when it's done cooling, cover the lid, put it in the fridge, and you have a delicious ready to eat jar of pickled onions that has limitless uses in the kitchen. Cook salmon like this. Number 13. This is a technique that I've been using to cook salmon that I pretty much have no desire to cook it any other way, okay? The key is slow and low. A female salmon lays 3,000 eggs a year and has yet to receive a Mother's Day card from one of them. Joan Rivers said that. You'll love salmon this way. Here's a process. Preheat your oven to 225. Rub both sides of salmon with salt and a dash of sugar if you want. Let it sit on the rack for a few minutes before going into the oven. Then place it into the middle of the oven and cook for 30 to 40 minutes. So right when the outside starts getting a little bit cooked, before you see the white, the fat being pulled out, that's you're cooking it too much if that happens. So you wanna go before that. You can test by taking a knife or fork and just kind of opening up. And if the middle is that nice raw pink and the outside is just cooked enough, delicious. Pull it out, let it rest a minute or two, and then serve. One more before I let you go. Ah, yes. Number 36, the good old taste your food often rule. I still struggle with this. It's like this weird idea that my food should taste great. I shouldn't have to taste it, but that's ridiculous. The only way you know food tastes good is if you taste it. This is why chefs are obsessed with flavor and tasting and adjusting using their tongue. You have to use your tongue and your flavor to adjust a dish because there is so much variation in ingredients. You're not gonna get it right by just like watching what you're throwing into a dish. I believe it's a cook's moral obligation to add more butter given the chance. <laughs> Michael Ruhlman, I agree. I have a confession to make. I suck at this. I have a weird mental block to tasting food before it's done. It's like I feel it's an affront to my cooking skill that I should have to taste something rather than it being delicious already. This is obviously nonsensical ego since the greatest chefs in the world trust their taste first and foremost. I'm working on it. Chefs taste everything all the time. They taste raw ingredients, they taste salt, they taste de dishes at multiple steps throughout the cooking process. How are you supposed to know if a dish is correct if you don't taste it? How do you know if your fresh herbs are spicy or mild if you don't taste them? What about those spices that have been sitting in your pantry for months? Taste them. I think that's the end of the tip. Oh, one more. Taste everything often. So that's three tips for my new book. You can get this on Amazon. There'll be a link below, of course. And I just want to iterate the importance of getting in the kitchen. 
So I've been telling people lately, I've kind of changed my mind on eating out. I used to think you could strategically eat out here and there and kind of choose what you're doing in this and that. But then I started realizing, I mean, I kind of knew this and I guess I was blocking it out for some reason. Almost everything you have in a restaurant is cooked in seed and vegetable oil crap. And those omega-6s, omega-9s, the pro-inflammatory toxic seed oils are one of the worst things that humans can eat. There is no way that you can eat sustainably long-term for good well-being and health at restaurants. You can't do it. And you absolutely can't do it out of packaged processed food. So get in the kitchen, build your cooking skills, build your sourcing skills, build your awareness of things like salt and using ingredients and basic cooking and technique and using the oven and pan frying and whatever. It will be a rewarding lifelong pursuit that will also, as a byproduct, give you literally amazing health and an amazing body. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, hey, Colin here. Got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles, such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are going to help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes.